Discover the latest health tips, expert advice, and inspiring stories. This is the Health Channel Podcast. Your journey to better health starts now. Hi, I'm Dr. Scarlett Constant, founder of Constant Care Pediatrics. Welcome to Ask the Doc, a show where we encourage you viewers to send in your questions so that I can answer them in real time. Today's show, we're going to talk about weight gain over the summer, and it looks like we have a question coming in right now. We have our first question from Sandra. Hi, Dr. Constant. My two kids, ages 9 and 11, stayed home this summer. Usually they go to camp, but they didn't want to go this year. But now I see they both gained a lot of weight, maybe 15 pounds. I don't know why I didn't notice it before. Any suggestions for helping them lose those summer pounds? Sandra, I'm sorry to hear that. And it's not your fault for not noticing. Your kids have been home with you and you've seen them all summer. So it's something that happens so gradually that you just don't even notice. And that's fine. Now that they're going back into school, it's really time for us to get back into a normal routine. Encourage them, number one, to have a structured schedule during the day. They're waking up on time, getting to school, and make sure that they're getting to bed at a reasonable hour so that they're getting adequate sleep. If your children are active and involved in physical activities such as sports or martial arts or dance, then let's make sure that we enroll them for the year and get them back into their activities as usual. In the meantime, aside from school, when they do come home before homework, everybody should try to take a family walk and just start getting active again as a family, rather than putting the pressure onto your girls exclusively. So try to maybe incorporate a family walk before dinner or after dinner, and then get them back into their homework routine. I'm sure they'll be able to shed the weight in no time. Good luck. So our next question is coming in, and this question is from Dylan. Dr. Constant, my wife and I have been on Ozempic for about six months now, and we've both lost weight. I've dropped 25 pounds, and my wife has lost at least 15. Our teenage children are also overweight, and we'd like to know if these medications might be right for them. What do you think? Well, Dylan, congratulations to you and your wife for your weight loss. I think that's amazing. You know, these meds have been proven to work very well for weight loss and for glucose control. Um, The meds are great when you do have a problem managing your glucose. And so if your children, the first thing I would say for your children is for them to go see their pediatrician. What you'd want to do is make sure that they have their labs drawn and we check their glucose level, their insulin levels, and of course their cholesterol levels. And once that is established, We also want to make sure that their weight is within normal limits. If they're overweight, they usually should be able to lose the weight with a modified exercise regimen as well as a diet regimen. But if they are in what we consider obese, medically obese, then uh, your physician might want to consider those medications. So the first step for you is to bring the girls to their pediatrician and have the proper evaluation before we move on to more aggressive therapies such as Ozempic or Manjaro. So here's our next question, and it looks like it's coming from Facebook, and it's from Carlos. Dr. Constant, my seven-year-old daughter is a serious athlete. She's a gymnast and plays soccer and tennis. I'm all for sports, and I support her in all she does, but I'm concerned about her overdoing it. She's exhausted at the end of the day, of course, and she doesn't really have time for anything other than school and sports. Is this too much of a good thing? Well, Carlos, that's amazing that your daughter is so motivated and so involved. But yes, it sounds like there's way, this is way too much for her. A child should not come home and be so exhausted that they don't have time to do anything else or enjoy the simple pleasures. Their schedules should not be over packed and overstimulated so that they don't have time just to get their work done or maybe decompress or enjoy time at home. It is really important that we watch how we schedule our kids. Most importantly, while all of these sports are great and it's it's really wonderful that she is so active, you really don't want to over, there's something called overuse injury. And at, a seven, at age seven, your child is still growing and developing. You really don't want them to overuse their muscles and um, and harm their tendons or even pull anything at such a young age. You really, you know, it's very important that they are moderate with their exercise, but that they don't overdo it. So I would maybe think about scaling back for your child and, you know, splitting up the sports over seasons or over the next couple of years so that she feels comfortable and that she's and she is not really you know overworking her young growing body 
Good luck to you. And I hope that that helps. Looks like we have another question coming in on the All Health TV app. This question is from Selena. Hi, doctor. I'm a little worried about my 12-year-old son. He's always loved food and had a healthy appetite, but there's a long history of obesity in our family, and my son has gained a lot of weight recently. I don't want to put him on a diet because diets don't really work in our family, but I also don't want him to go through some of the health problems that my husband and I have had because of our weight. What would you recommend? Well, Selena, I really commend you for getting ahead of this now before it becomes a very serious issue, the number one recommendation I have is to completely alter the eating habits and the diet of the entire family. You've gone through this before and you and your husband know the repercussions and you know the, the medical complications that you've endured. So keep healthy choices in the house, change the diet for everyone in the house and your lifestyle as a family should change. If you're concerned about your weight and your husband's concerned about his weight and now your child is gaining weight, then all of you together should go outside and do something physical together, whether it's just on the weekend. It could be once a week. I know that schedules are very difficult with school and with work. So if you could commit to going on a family bike ride or going on a family walk, swimming, going to the beach, anything that would promote physical activity, that's the first step. You want to remove any temptations in the house that could be bad for your child, sodas, cookies, junk food, all of those things should be eliminated. I'm not saying that the whole family has to eat salads and vegetables all day, but you have, there are some things that you can absolutely cut out that are harmful to everyone in that house. And those are the easy ways to get started to make those modifications as a family so that you could head in the right direction. Take baby steps. I always suggest don't remove all the favorite things. Don't make this something of a punishment for your child. Make it more of a happy modification for everyone. So we have another question coming in, and that's from Facebook, and the question's from Arturo. Dr. Constant, our four children have always been active. They play sports, they're outside all the time, swimming, running, and playing with friends. All good, right? But they don't really take time to study and get their homework done. It's become a problem, especially for the younger ones, who always want to be outside and playing, rather than inside doing homework. I think we need some help finding a balance. Any suggestions? Yes, Arturo, you definitely need to find a balance. That's great that your kids enjoy being outside. And there is something very innocent about wanting to play outside and, and, um, and be very physical and play with your siblings. And, and that's wonderful. But of course, there's a time and a place for everything. And your kids have to understand that school comes first. And if there is schoolwork to be done, that needs to be done first before they can go out and play. And you can even have it as a reward system. When the kids come home, let them know they can have a snack and get their homework done. If everything is done within a reasonable amount of time, they're absolutely allowed to go outside and have a free for all. They can play as long as they want, as late as they want, depends on you and your wife and what, and you know, you use your discretion, but it could be a reward system. They can do it as long as their work gets done. That's their agreement. And if they don't like it, then they need to understand that school is most important. So usually if we set boundaries and we set expectations for our children, usually there shouldn't be any problems. So now it looks like a question is coming in uh, from the All Health TV app. This question is from Kailani. Hello, doctor. My son Keanu went to sleepaway camp earlier this summer, and between the burgers, fries, and ice cream socials, he's put on a couple. Keanu's been a little withdrawn since he got back, so my question to you is, are there signs that indicate a child may be struggling with an unhealthy body image due to weight gain? Well, Kalani, yes, there are signs. I'm not quite sure if that's exactly what's going on with Keanu. But yes, if you find that your child seems to be a little more shy when they're exposed or wants to put on extra clothing when playing outside or getting into the pool, or they seem to be a little more withdrawn or um concerned with their body weight and what they're eating and what you're serving, then this might be a red flag that they, they are suffering from body dysmorphism. But you can also ask your child and talk to them about the changes and, and acknowledge that you've noticed a change in his body. That's okay to talk about and ask them how they feel about that change and talk to them about what they'd like to do about it, if anything, and let them know that you support him and that you would be willing to help if there are any modifications that need to be made. All right. It looks like the questions are coming in. We, I think all of us have gone through a little bit of summer weight gain and it's getting us a little concerned, but don't worry. Nothing is irreversible. Looks like we have a question now coming in from Facebook and this question's from Dane. Hey doc, 
Just like the last person who wrote in, my two kids, Savannah and Steven, also went away to sleepaway camp. They didn't gain too much weight, but they sure didn't eat that great. Now that they're home, all they want is sugary, sweet cereal and hot dogs. How do we wean them off sugary and processed meat? Well, Dane, the answer is very simple. You don't need to wean, you just cut it off. Don't buy it. If it's not in your home, it can't be eaten. I always remind patients and parents that you're the one with the money, you're the one supplying the food, and for the most part, you're the one with the car to go get the food. If it is not there in the home, the children are not going to eat it. And if you don't provide them with the money to go buy it outside at a fast food place, then they're not gonna get it. The best thing you want to do is provide healthy options in your home. Create the environment in your home that you want your children to be exposed to. We can just provide the foods in our home and show our fam, our kids how we eat and the healthy way to eat. Okay? We were not born loving sugar. Okay, next question. This looks like it's coming in from the All Health TV app, and it's from Mickey. Hi, Dr. Constant. I hate to see it. But my teens are hardcore addicts, tech and media addicts. They'd rather stay in and spend time on their computers, phones, and game consoles than play outside. What are some ways to get kids and teens engaged in physical activities during the summer? So good question, Mickey. You know, it's really interesting. I know that now there's this camp culture and everybody goes to camp either at their school or maybe a sleepaway camp or camp on a lake. And, you know, if you can in your community, there are camps. But it seems like the teen population is a little tough because they've kind of aged out of those camps. So it gets a little bit harder to get them outside. I completely agree. Um, there are a few tips that you can, you can, I have for you to get your teens out. Um, first of all, you want to make a get if you have a pool, you can get them in the pool, but if not, you can always use the good old fashioned hose and get them in the sprinklers. So in the pool, I always suggest that you ask your kids to maybe swim a couple laps before they play. And you don't even have to directly tell them to do it. With my kids, I just challenge them and I say that I'm going to time you in a race or I don't think that you could beat your sibling um, swimming four laps and then they just go for it immediately. They take the bait and then they start racing, which is a great form of exercise. But if you don't have a pool, you could just put the sprinklers on and have them run and play. I mean, sprinklers are old fashioned fun and everybody loves it. You could also, of course, send your kids to camp or a class in your community or a class that's going on at their school. And they usually have a lot of physical activities at these camps. If not, you can do um, encourage them to or create a nature scavenger hunt. Those are always so much fun. You can just create those at home together and just find a few items and have them go around the neighborhood and race each other. You could time it so that they're riding their bikes and trying to get there faster. These are all great ways just to get outside and engage and, and get into your neighborhood, meet your neighbors, hang out with the friends. Um, another thing is just really have them go outside and play in the yard. If your kids are somewhere between the age of 10 and four or eight and 14, they usually still do like to play outside in the yard and just encourage them to do it. Sometimes they just forget they need a little prompt to go outside. And don't forget, you are the parent. You can take away the devices. There can be a time during the day where you say absolutely no devices. And if they don't have access to those devices and they say, well, now what do I do? Go outside. When you come back in, I'll happily give you your phone or your console again. Another thing you can do is if you have a pet, ask your child to walk the dog. Your dog should be walked twice a day at a bare minimum for 30 minutes each. So tell your kids that you want the dog walked. They can start a business. This is old fashioned as well, but trust me, neighbors love it if your kids have a car wash. They can have a car wash and offer to wash the neighbor's cars and go up and down the street doing this. They can offer to walk the neighbor's dogs. They can have a dog walking company. There are many different things that they can do and they can get paid for it, which I think is a win-win for your team. And finally, you can encourage them to maybe even have a messy art project outside. That might not be physically active, but at least they're outside. They're getting their vitamin D, they're exposed to the sunlight, and that's good enough. So I hope that that helps get your teens outside and off those devices. So it looks like we have another question coming in and this is from Suda. Dr. Constant, how important is sleep in managing weight gain in adolescents? And what are some tips for ensuring they get enough rest? Well, actually sleep hygiene is very important, not only for brain development, but also for weight, as far as weight maintenance. And studies have found that Disordered sleep or lack of sleep is actually a contributing factor to being overweight or obese. 
So you certainly want to make sure that your children are getting anywhere from eight to 10 hours of sleep at night. And the way to do that is, again, I know I talk about this all the time, but it's true. You have to establish structure in your home. If you don't have a bedtime or a, a timeline where your children need to stop and get off their devices or stop their homework, then they're just going to go to sleep whenever they want and fall asleep whenever they get exhausted. You really do need to encourage a bedtime in your house or maybe like a guideline to say that by this time, all devices need to be shut off work needs to come needs to stop and we need to unwind and get ready for bed and that goes for the mornings as well during the summer we tend to let our kids sleep in because we think that they need the rest but truly sleeping in contributes to the bad eating habits disordered sleep bad eating habits and therefore weight gain if you're sleeping in past 10 a.m., you're not going to have a healthy breakfast and you're certainly not going to go exercise. So we really need them to wake up at the appropriate time, have a good meal, get their metabolism going and have them exercising in the morning and get the day going. So sleep hygiene is very important. And I encourage parents to make sure they enforce it in their home, especially if they have adolescents in the house. OK, it looks like we have another question coming in. And this question is from Mandy. Dr. Constant, what should parents do if they notice that their child's weight gain is accompanied by other issues such as fatigue or mood swings? Well, absolutely. If your child is starting to demonstrate signs of fatigue and mood swings, usually because of the fatigue or maybe because they do notice the weight gain, you absolutely want to bring your child to their pediatrician. This is something that needs to be evaluated by a physician as far as a physical exam, lab work, and maybe even further studies. So if you're starting to see these signs, please make sure you seek medical attention. Okay, so it looks like the questions are still rolling in. That's great. Our next question is from Esteban. Hi, Doc. What are the potential side effects of Manjaro and Ozempic for adolescents? Okay, Manjaro and Ozempic for adolescents. You know, these are very strong drugs and they do work very well, but let's just remember um, if you're at the adolescent is obese, they're gonna lose, you know, the idea is to lose anywhere from 15 to 25 pounds. So, uh, Fast weight loss is, of course, a benefit, but it's also a side effect. You also want to look out for dizziness, nausea. Sometimes they, um, you, the adolescent population will feel a little more fatigued than usual because they are actually taking in much less calories than they're used to. So they might be sleepy. They might be a little lethargic or have a low motivation. And some have even had some emotional ability. These are some side effects that happen because remember in the adolescent population, they're also still going going through puberty and have some hormonal changes. So you want to look out for these side effects. And if they're overwhelmingly interfering with your child's life, then you do want to seek medical attention. Looks like we have our last question coming in, and that is from Kitty. Hello, Dr. Constant. How can parents work with their child's healthcare provider to develop a personalized plan for managing weight? Well, a lot of primary care providers are very happy to help with this plan, and it's usually going to um, it's usually going to discuss family changes, lifestyle changes, exercise, and some dietary modifications. But if you would like a very specific plan as far as exactly which meals to prepare for your child and the calorie counts, then you likely are going to want to seek um, the attention from a nutritionist. It's very difficult in the primary care uh, setting to come up with such a personalized plan. The overall changes we are able to recommend, but as far as calorie counting and exactly which meals are going to work um, as far as maintenance and control of the glucose, you would want to see a dietitian. There was so much that I discussed during this show, and I just want to reiterate the importance, number one, of setting boundaries in your home. You want to make sure that you set up expectations for your child so that they know what you expect of them as far as food, sleep, and uh, device as, as far as devices and how much they're allowed to watch and how long they're allowed to be on them. Those are your limits that you would set. If we don't want our children to eat certain types of foods, please do not provide them in the home. It's very easy if they have healthy choices, then they're, if, or if they have healthy options rather, then they're gonna make healthy choices. You wanna lead by example and lead the lifestyle that you want your child to lead. 
eat the foods that you want your child to eat and exercise and um, participate in activities that you want your children to participate in. If you want your children to be more physically active, get out there together as a family, go on walks together, participate in activities over the weekend together, walk your dog together. So these are all ways that you can really help your child with weight loss, better food choices, and physical activity. And remember, support your child and let them know that you're there to help them and you want the best for their health overall. This is not about uh, a number or a target weight that you want. It's really about a target lifestyle that you want your child to achieve and you want your child to be healthy overall. That's what's most important. And if you have any questions or you're concerned about uh, weight gain or weight loss in your child, and you should always seek help with your pediatrician and come up with a plan together. I hope that this helps you and good luck with the start of the school year. And have, I'm glad that everybody has uh, been able to participate and, and answer their questions. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Health Channel podcast. We hope this information has been useful. However, please remember that only your doctor can advise you about what is best for you. Do not start, modify, or suspend treatment based on anything you have heard on this podcast. Please join us again soon.